Hi everyone, it's such a beautiful day I thought I'd come outside and film this uh, video. This is part two of my to be read uh, books list and this is the non-fiction section. As I said I've got so many, I split it into two. We've done fiction, so this is non-fiction. As before this is books that I am not currently reading or books that I've bought this year. So let's get started because there's quite a lot of them. So the first book on the to be read non-fiction is Joe and Marilyn Legends in Love by C. David Heyman. This came out I think last year. Um, C. David Heyman is not renowned for his authentic, really well researched books. Um, he wrote, um, let's have a look, what did he write? Uh, Bobby and Jackie, uh, Liz, RFK Candid biography, and you know, they weren't that good. He's since passed, um, and generally his books are believed to have been not that well researched, so they can't be taken as gospel. So that's the first one. I probably will read it. There are some nice pictures in it, but I don't know when I'm going to get round to it. Next is a book on Liza Minnelli called Under the Rainbow, obviously because she's Judy Garland's daughter and Judy sang over. Um, basically this book came out about 1996 I think, so it's quite out of date, obviously, because Liza's still very much with us, hooray! Um, it's by George Mayer and it is just Liza up to the date 1996. Um, so I'm looking forward to that because I really like Liza and I love Lorna and obviously I love Judy Garland and I can hear the ice cream van go into the maid and cut the sound off of this video. The next book is The Plantagenets by Dan Jones, massive paperback book about obviously the Plantagenets got this last year, I think it was last year, of course there was a lot of news because obviously Richard III being um, found in Leicester and reinterred in Leicester Cathedral, so I'm big on history so it's a big tome but I'm looking forward to that one. The next one's another history book but this is sort of a history book, um, it's sort of an book, book on Egypt, but it's sort of about, is there a secret chamber underneath the Sphinx? So it's, it's one of these sort of conspiracy theory type books I believe, it's very hard to read, but I do love ancient Egypt and everything about it, so I thought it was quite interesting to read. Um, it's under the folklore myths and legends books, but who knows. Next is a book, a biography on my favourite author, which is Thomas Hardy. Um, this is by uh, Claire Tomlin. This is actually my friend Phil's book. He lent me to this, this to me ages ago, and I just haven't got around to reading it yet. So this is the next big book. I've just finished a massive book, but this is the next big book I'm going to start on, because I really love Thomas Hardy. Another great big book I have finished. I actually did start this one, but it was so long ago I stopped. So I'm going to start it again, and that this is Holding a Good Thought for Marilyn, 1926 to 1954, The Hollywood Years, by Stacey Eubank. Um, it's a very, very well researched book. It's got drawings of Marilyn in it, and yeah, lots of different drawings of her in it, and lots of information. Some people say it reads like a shopping list, because it is listed a lot, but that's something wrong with guys. Sometimes that's the best way to, to report facts. Next is a Judy Garland related book called Under the Rainbow, there's lots of rainbows today, um, by John Carlyle and it's an intimate memoir of Judy Garland, Rock Hudson and My Life in Hollywood. So obviously John Carlyle was an actor in 1954, he was cut in a, a star is born, I'm reading this from the inside flap. But you know, he also rubbed shoulders with Marlon Brando, James Dean, Raymond Burr, Rock Hudson, Montgomery Cliff. Lana Turner, Marilyn Monroe, I believe, is mentioned, Joan Fontaine, Harry Lamar, Fred so pretty much all of them. So, and I love Hollywood gossip, so it's got to be done. The next one is another terrible book on Marilyn, which is called Marilyn Monroe, My Little Secret by Tony Jerris. Tony Jerris uh, wrote this book for, he ghost wrote this book for uh, June Lawrence, who was supposed to be the head of Marilyn's 20th Century Fox fan club. Now, June Lawrence died shortly before the publication of this book, so how much of what is written here is true and how much is in the author's imagination? Literally, there are conversations repeated word for word, and um, some of the things he says about her is not very nice, and I have very, very, very mixed feelings. I don't like to say a book's terrible unless I've read it, but I, you know, have, knowing what I know is in here, I know it's not going to be that good. Another Marilyn little book is this tiny little book of Marilyn quotes and facts. Whether these quotes and facts are correct, I don't know because I haven't really read it yet. I've had a quick flip. So here we go. It's a nice picture on the cover. 
Marilyn's personal library contained over 400 books on topics ranging from art to history. This is true. Let's see what else. I don't know. Oh, there's lots anyway. Lots of little facts and tips in there and things she said. The body is meant to be seen, not all covered up. True, she said that. So there's, there's lots of little things like that. Sometimes a lot of the quotes are paraphrased, so they're not actually not what she said, but they're not exactly what this what she said at all. I'm just going to have a sip of my lemonade. It's just gorgeous out here. The next book is a book on Jack the Ripper. And this one is... It was actually a cheap one. It says twelve ninety nine on that, but it was actually, I think I got it for $4.99 in the works. And... It's got like, like speckled blood on it. I don't know if you can see that. that there. It looks like blood spots, but it's not. So it's got a map of White Chapel, which is nice. And there are sort of also uh, bits of the, the some of the posters that came out. Newspaper comics. With, um, these are in the papers when the murders were going on. So I haven't read this book, but I, it is part of my Ripper collection. I am a bit of a Ripperologist in my spare time. I, I find it very fascinating that the world's most famous serial killer, and let's be honest, he is the world's most famous serial killer, only kills what's agreed to be five people. There are serial killers that have killed many more people, but are not as famous as Jack. And we don't even know who he was. So that's why I think it's so fascinating and enduring. But that's a good one. I can read. Still more to go. Now the next one is one that Paul bought when we were in London earlier this year, um, from the Vintage Magazine shop, which is my one of my favourite shops in London, along with Foils. And it's a thousand and one bizarre rock and roll stories. And they are. So if we open up a page and we go, let's have a look, see if there's anybody we know. British singer Kate Bush, who had hits with Wuthering Heights and The Man with the Child in His Eyes, in the 1970s, turned to protest songs later in her career. Her Never Forever railed against the possibility of a nuclear holocaust and the dreaming was pro -ab Australian Aboriginal rights. So they're just like really short little facts and trivia bits. And I love trivia. Sometimes it might be the way they died or something like that. Um, on the bottom it actually says, the rock star's missing corpse. That's interesting. Chickens, bats and a cow on stage. The one-armed drummer and rat bite kills rock star. Tales of excess and debauchery. Robert Lodge. Oh, yes, you're all going to love that, I know. So the next one is a book that came out in the 60s and it's called The Story of the Misfits by James Good. And it was the making of the motion picture film The Misfits, which was written by Arthur Miller for his wife at the time, Marilyn Monroe. Also starred Clark Gable and Montgomery Clift and Eli Wallach and Thelma Ritter. Now, it was also Clark Gable's final film. He died shortly after filming completed. And so this is the story of that film shoot. And I think it came out in 66 or something like that. There's even, because I bought it secondhand, a bit of newspaper in there. I think somebody must have been using it as a marker and it's just been stated there. First printing, 63. So it came out a year after Marilyn died. So I haven't read that yet. I think I've had a quick look through the pictures. That's what I always do with all my Marilyn books. I look at the pictures first. Next we've got a book on Shakespeare. It's called Shakespeare A Life and it's by Park Honan. We don't know a lot about Shakespeare's life. So it's a very thick book considering we don't know a lot. But there are photographs of various buildings and, and places and sketches and it's even in here, Elise, Elizabethan gloves, kind of a kind familiar to the glover John Shakespeare, which was William Shakespeare's farmer. I don't know if you can see that. So, I like I said, I do love biographies. Another biography is Can't Buy Me Love by Jonathan Gould, The Beatles, Britain, and America. <laughs> Again, it's a bit of a hefty tome. Um, everything about the Beatles you ever wanted to know, I would imagine, is in this one. Again, it's one of Paul's amazing because he doesn't read big books. Another film related book is Shepparton Babylon. Now in the 60s and 70s there was a series of books by Kenneth Anger called Hollywood Babylon and they were full of gossip and rubbish about the stars. Um, literally it was absolute nonsense. Um, Jane Mansfield was decapitated, she wasn't. What happened was a wig was thrown from her, her head when the, the, the car crashed. She wasn't decapitated. It, it all nonsense. Um, whether or not this is actually a British version in the sense that the stores are rubbish or whether or not it's actually just about British cinema. So yeah, the scandals, the suicides, the immolations, the contact, contract killings, the products of thousands of conversations with veteran filmmakers. Here you will meet the actress who remembers the night in 1920 when her father cheated her out of a Hollywood contract. 
the screenwriter who, one night in t 1924, watched his film idol snort cocaine from illuminated glass dance floor on the bank of the Thames at Maidenhead. The genteel Scottish comedian who, at the age of 55, reinvented herself as a star of exploitation cinema and fondly remembers the one where I drilled in people's heads and ate their brains. Okay. And you wonder why the non-fiction pile is so high. It's scary. Another Jack the Ripper book here. This is Jack the Ripper by Stephen Knight. This is the book that started the whole Masonic conspiracy royal theory that the film From Hell came from, which in turn was based on a comic book called From Hell. Um, who was Jack the Ripper? Um, and, and he blames it on Prince Albert Victor and William Gull. And it all went from there. And it's absolute nonsense because the prince wasn't even in the country at the time. He can be documented to be elsewhere. William Gull had had a series of strokes, so he was in no fit state to kill anybody, let alone, you know, he didn't eat his dinner, let alone kill anybody. But this was one of the books that launched the Ripper industry as it is today, I believe. So, oh uh, yeah, I picked this up for a few few pounds, two quid, two quid pound fifty, something like that, in the local second hand bookshop. I'm looking forward to that. Something to read. Next one was one of Paul's. If, if Paul reads something I fancy, it passes to me. And this one is Tony Hawk's Once Upon a Time in the West Country. So it's when he moves into the West Country and decides to cycle coast to coast with a mini pig called Titch. Why not? As you do. Next one is Judy Garner. This is Judy with love, Lorna Smith. Lorna Smith ran the British chapter of the official Judy Garland fan club. And when Judy Garland decided to disband the club, the British chapter and, and Lorna Smith wrote to Judy and actually said to her, can we keep our chapter going as a separate club? And, and Judy said yes. And um, Judy and Lorna were quite good friends. Judy would go to British fan club meetings if she could. Um, there's one particular one she went to where they screened Pepe, I think, and, and another film that she wasn't quite so keen on. I've not seen it much. In, I'm not sure. Um, she also wrote another book about Judy talking to her from beyond the grave, which uh, is a bit I haven't got. But yeah, so this is just a biography by a fan, but a fan who knew her, and also contains some very nice pictures of La Garland. Next is yet another terrible Marilyn book. Marilyn at Rainbow's End makes it sound like it should be about Judy Garland, but it's about Marilyn, allegedly. It's by Darwin Porter, and Darwin Porter has a reputation of writing books that are National Enquirer-esque, they're scandalous, they scandal rag stories. Um, again, conversations written for Baton, um, the JFK story, I'm not gonna go into, into the whole Kennedy nonsense. If you want me to do a video on Marilyn books and the Kennedys and the truth and the lies, I'm quite happy to leave a comment below, but I'm not going to get into that here. Whether there's actually any truth in much of this, I don't know because I haven't actually read it yet. So, as you can see, the pile is quite big. The next book is a very little book and it's called Bristol, the Muddling Through Bristol in the 50s. Um, and I bought this because my parents and I myself were born in Bristol and of course my parents grew up in the 50s, my dad was 10 in 1950 and my mum was 10 in 1954 so I, I bought it for them to have a read to see what, you know, if it was the Bristol they remembered and they really enjoyed that book and I do love these sorts of books with old stories and old photographs, I love photographs and I do like buying books of old photographs talking of photographs and photography the next one is called Focus on Pain, Fame, Fame Pain, uh, by Anthony Beauchamp. He was a photographer in the 1950s and he photographed Marilyn Monroe, among others, but he was also married to Winston Churchill's wife, uh, daughter, Sarah, I think her name is. I, I can't remember. He did. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Sarah. He married Winston Churchill's daughter, and Winston Churchill was not happy, but he did take. I can find some, some lovely pictures of Marilyn, pictures that, that, that he's born about. It's very old. And this book came out not long before he killed himself. I think there's a picture of Marilyn here somewhere. Yeah, there's, there's one of the ones he took of Marilyn there. So it was, she was quite young at the time, and on this page is a very rare one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, 
So yeah, but because he's also a photography, photographer and I am into photography, it's another reason why I bought it. I did main it by because I knew that he spoke about Marilyn in this book, but I haven't actually read it yet. Um, oh, another book about cinema, Billy Wilder, Nobody's Perfect by Charlotte Char Chandler. So it's a biography of the screen director, Billy Wilder, who directed Some Like It Hot, Seven Rich, Sunset Boulevard, The Apartment, and, and so on. Um, again, mostly bought because A, I love Hollywood, and, and B, he worked with Marilyn twice on two of her most famous films, Some Like It Hot and The Seven Year Itch. So I thought it would be interesting. And he speaks for himself. It's as close to the autobiography as it could be. So it's not a very long biography for a man of really Billy Wilder's stature. who made such some of the best films ever. It's a nice book. Another biography he is by John Lahr. And it's called Notes on a Cowardly Line. As you can see, there's no dust jacket. It's very, very old. Um, now, Notes on a Cowardly Line is the life of Bert Lahr who was obviously John Lard's father and obviously played the cowardly lion in The Wizard of Oz. So again, it's a connection to, to Judy Garland, but it, you know, I'm interested in him as a performer and a person. And he was a larger than life character and he'll always be the cowardly lion, no matter how the stories of Oz are twisted and they have been over the years. So yes, and the, the night he died, Judy went out and sang for him. I think she cancelled the, the night he died, and the next night she went on and she dedicated, I think it was over the rainbow, which would make sense, to my dear cowardly lion. And it was, she, she was heartbroken. Uh, next is um, the memoirs of Sarah, Sarah Bernhardt, who was a very, very famous actress. Um, born in 1844. And made her first tour of America in 1880. So, again, she's, it's theatrical. It's just something that fascinates me is these actors through the years, performers, why people do it. I do it myself. I love acting. I'll be acting again later next this year, but that's another story. This is was a present from Phil. Again, it's film related. They all are the last few. Uh, it's Granter, the magazine of new writing, and it's the film one. So it's got um, articles written by various people, including Alfred Hitchcock. There's Martin Scorsese, Tessa Hadley, Ian Jack, lots of things about film and I don't know, I haven't read it yet because ah, I got so much to read. Finally, the last book on the to be read non fiction list is another Judy Garland related one and it's another autobiography it's another biography of one of her daughters. In fact it's the autobiography of Lorna Luft, which is called Me and My Shadows, a family story. Now this is the book that was made into the miniseries Life with Judy Garland, starring Judy Davis. Um, and the, 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 the miniseries is absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best miniseries that I've ever seen on a famous person, because usually <coughs> they're really terrible. Mm -hmm. But this one was particularly good. I'm going to start coughing in a minute. So I felt I've been meaning to buy a copy of the biography for a long time, so I picked this up for a few quid. I mean, a lot of my books come from eBay, a lot of them come from other shops. This came from a shop in, in Newport Market, so I'll take a look at this one came from Hay on Y, which is luckily not that far away, and I can get there quite often, I usually go at least once a year. So that is my to be read non-fiction list, so as you can see it's quite massive. Um, I will be back in a few days with a May haul, I've bought nine books this month. And I've read so far 13. 13. Yeah, but I, I expect it to be at 15 by Tuesday night. So I will be back with my haul probably on mm, tomorrow or Tuesday, and then with my wrap up of what I've read sometime in the week. As long as the weather stays nice and I can come outside because it's just so nice out here and the light's better. So that's it for now. I hope you're all reading lots of good books, and I'm going to look forward to checking out your videos this week. Bye for now. Bye.